Chaz Surratt, uh, linebacker out of North Carolina. This is a guy that has just impressed me. And when we get to our shakers and movers uh, segment, this is the guy right here that shot up the board for me. Uh, again, when I go into film study, I try not to go in with any preconceived notions. I don't care what anybody else's list looks like. Um, I don't know what is being said about this player or not being said about him. I just go off of what I see. And what I saw was a guy that I walked away just impressed by. Simply put, I walked away saying, this guy is a beast. And I don't know why more people aren't talking Chaz Surratt. And, you know, maybe it's the lack of experience. You know, maybe it's um, his brother it might be outshadowing, you know, outshining him and overshadowing him. I don't know if any of those things ring true or not, but I just know what I saw. And uh, this is a guy with fringe first round talent. Let's uh, flip this thing over and talk about Chaz Surratt and uh, what he brings to the table. So uh, first thing for me with Chaz Surratt is his athleticism and speed. And again, you know, when you talk about a guy that's an ex quarterback, that transitions to linebacker, you're not expecting this kind of athleticism. And, and so he came to North Carolina, started seven games as a freshman, all right, gets injured. And so he comes back, has a disastrous game after he breaks his wrist, and he throws three interceptions, and he has a sit down with the coach at the time. And that coach says, look, dude, we're going to go in a different direction at the quarterback position, but I think you would make one hell of a linebacker. And nobody wants to hear that their dreams of being a starting quarterback are being dashed. Usually, if you can go somewhere else and start as a quarterback, you're going to transfer. And he contemplated transferring. And he was about to transfer. And then they fired the head coach, and Mac Brown comes in, and Mac Brown reassured him that, your best opportunity to get to the NFL, and trust me, I know, is linebacker. And he said, well, I want to make it to the NFL coach. And he said, well, I'm telling you, this is your best route right here. And he took Mac Brown's advice, and he hasn't looked back, and it's the best decision he's made in his life because um, this guy's legit. And the athleticism and speed uh, really took me by surprise. I wasn't expecting what I got on tape. I started in 2019. And I worked my way to 2020, and it, it just all fit like a, a perfectly put-together puzzle, man. All the pieces kind of just aligned. Um, and, and it starts with his athletic athleticism and speed. That's the building block. That's the foundation for everything that he does as a football player. Uh, uh, acceleration and closing speed, again, another one of those point A to point B guys. You know, Urban Meyer has this thing, um, you know, I think it's, three seconds, point A to point B, you know, something like that, where he wants a guy going ball to the wall for, you know, from point A to point B for seven seconds or something like that. And he's got the ability to just close the distance quickly. And um, I can't tell you how many times I'm watching this guy blitz. And just like that, he's at the quarterback. And I'm watching him against Clemson. He had two sacks in that game, tracked down Trevor Lawrence. Lawrence sees him coming, tries to rev up the engine. You know, Lawrence is one of those striders, so he needs to have a little bit of a runway to, to get it revved up. Well, he was already coming at top speed before Trevor Lawrence could even take two steps. He's on the ground. And Chas Surratt's already tracked him down and sacked him. So uh, this guy's closing ability and acceleration through the roof. Physicality and fearless. fearlessness. I talked about Nick Bolton and how he's a fearless guy. Doesn't give a damn. He's willing to sacrifice his body on every given snap. You know, I'm watching Chaz Surratt against Syracuse, and there's a, a helpless receiver coming across on a shallow uh, a crosser, and he just mollywops him. Now, he knocks himself down for a little while and, and jammed his neck up for a bit. He had to stay on the field for a little while. But he shook the cobwebs out, came back onto the field, and had a whale of a ball game. Uh, it, it, that's just who he is. If, if, I watched him take Travis Etienne on a, on a pass protection and put his dick in the dirt. I mean, absolutely steamrolled him on a play. So this is a guy, that just again, fearlessness when it comes to reckless abandon and not caring about uh, his well-being or yours. 
I, I, again, that's fun. Watching that for me is fun. Watching guys go out and put it out all on the line. Uh, he does that on every snap. Uh, willingness uh, at the point of attack. Again, he's not the biggest guy in the world. He's 6'2", 227. So 6'2", 230 essentially. You know, it's not the biggest guy in the world. You can't tell by the way he attacks the line of scrimmage. By the t- way he attacks offensive linemen and tight ends. Sometimes he gets his ass whooped. When you're 230, you're going to get your ass whooped by a guy that almost outweighs you by 100 pounds. That's going to happen. But he wins more than his fair share of battles. And more times than not, he does a great job of extending his arms, keeping that offensive lineman or, or that tight end at bay so that he can disengage and get to the ball carrier. Does a really good job at the point of attack for a guy his size. Block shedding, I just talked about that and alluded to that. Um, this is a guy that um, he just finds a way to shed blockers a lot of times, man. And that's a lost art with a lot of linebackers in college, not at the NFL level. At college, you don't see a lot of guys shedding blocks. They either slip it, they run around it, or they get blocked. He's one of those few guys that have mastered the art of shedding blocks. And so he finds a way to slip or he finds a way to, you know, lock out his arms and then toss a guy aside. Um, He just does a really good job of keeping himself free. There's one play he takes on um, the pulling guard. Guard's coming around. He attacks the line of scrimmage aggressively, meets that guard before the guard can get up into the hole, attacks him with his inside shoulder to keep his outside shoulder free. The running back tries to sneak past him. He corrals him with that one arm and holds on to him and help arrives, and it's a uh, one-yard loss. It's a beautiful play, and it's a great example and illustration of this guy just not necessarily shedding a block, but understanding how to play off of that block and still make a play. Um, Attacks the line of scrimmage. I just talked about him attacking the line of scrimmage. He does it aggressively. Um, Tackling machine. Uh, One of the best guys I've seen in this draft at getting players on the ground. Even the best of the best in this draft, I've seen them miss tackles. Not so much with um, Michael Parsons, but definitely uh, Jeremiah Owosu, uh, Koromoa saw him miss a, a ton of tackles. Um, I, I saw my number three linebacker miss a ton of tackles. Um, and when I say a ton, more than I would like. Not like every other tackle is a missed tackle, but a lot of these guys that I've even talked about already, missing tackles. Not Chaz Surratt. When he misses a tackle, I'm shocked. Generally, he gets guys on the ground. Coverage ability. He can run. Let me reiter- reiterate this. He can run. So, they do some creative things with him at North Carolina. They, they'll have him mugging the B gap only to turn and haul ass and, and try to get all the way back to um, cover the slot, you know, 30, 40 yards down the field. It's not ideal. Okay. And I saw him get beat against Clemson in a, in a similar coverage, but um, he has the ability to do that though. He wasn't that far off on that play. And there are so many times where he's mugging the the C gap. He looks like he's coming off the edge or he's mugging the B gap or he's mugging the A gap. And then he drops out and he hauls ass and he's right in perfect position to to force the quarterback to turn something down. So um, he's got some ability, man. And in space, man to man, um, he he does a pretty damn good job. I mean, this guy can do it all, man. Um, Blitzing and versatility, uh, one of my favorite attributes from Chaz Surratt is his ability to blitz. He just, there's a knack that you have to have in timing up blitzes. One of the reasons Tyran Matthew is one of the best blitzing safeties in football isn't because of his size. We know he's not the biggest guy. Isn't because he's the fastest guy. He's not a speed demon by any stretch of the imagination. Troy Palomalu, same thing. The reason is because they could time it up perfectly. And by the time you snap the ball, they're in full stride and they're already beating that tackle or they're beating that running back to the spot and they're getting to the quarterback. And Chaz Surratt is another one of those guys that just times it up well. He's physical on at the point of attack with uh, you know running backs and, and guys trying to protect the quarterback. And then he's got a couple of moves that he can put on you. But most importantly, he just knows how to time it up. You know, so... Um, his, this guy had 12 and a half sacks in two seasons at linebacker. They could let that sit, let that sit and resonate. That's, that's not, that's for a four year starter. 
That's a great number at linebacker. This guy had six and a half sacks his first year and another six this past year. He's a problem as a blitzer. And it's that versatility that really drew me to him is that I can blitz this guy, I can put him in coverage. And oh, by the way, he's physical at the point of attack at the line of scrimmage. Um, and then he's a three down linebacker. And I don't like using this term a lot because everybody's got upside. If you're coming from college into the NFL, we hope that you've got some untapped potential. So I don't use upside anymore like I used to. Like everybody had upside. I would always talk about upside. Only in rare cases do I use the phrase upside. Chaz Surratt has upside. He's only played linebacker for two seasons. He's going to get better. He's just scratching the surface. I'm excited for him. Wherever he goes, I will follow him because I want to see if this guy matures the way that I think his skill set suggests he should. Um, there's a lot here to like. Um, his weaknesses. He's 6'2", 227. So I just talked about Jabril Cox being 6'3", 233, and hey, um, do I want him in the game when I know the other team's going to try to um, ram the football down my throat on the ground? He's not the same guy as Jabril Cox, okay? Different animal, but he's still 6'2", 227. You know, let's just round it up to 230. He's still 6'2", 230. Um, it's not big, but I don't think about that anymore because Darius Leonard said, Hey, I feel at my best at 215. He played last season at 215. Anybody going to question whether Darius Leonard is the three-down linebacker or if he can handle himself in, in the box? I think not. So I look at Chad Surratt in the same uh, way. Experience, again, I, I hearken back to this. Only two years of starting experience at the linebacker position. He could have come out of college last year and entered the draft and he went back on his own volition and said, I need another year of seasoning at linebacker. And I think he really enhanced his draft stock by doing so. But he only has two years of experience at the linebacker position. So while I talk about upside on one hand being a positive, it's also a weakness because um, he doesn't have a ton of experience. There is a lot that he still has to learn. But that's a good thing. You should be excited about that. Pursuit angles. Not the best in the world at this current juncture. They could get a lot better. Um, there are times where he doesn't take the right angle. Uh, there are times where you're like, I wouldn't have gone there. You probably read that wrong in terms of how he uh, gets into his fits in the run game. There are times where, as I talked about, um, I think with Nick Bolton, how he will attack the wrong gap. Uh, there are some issues with pursuit angles with Chaz Surratt, and it's not just in the run game. It's also uh, in coverage as well, as I talked about with Nick Bolton, another guy that, you know, not always taking the best angles. I'm watching him drop, um, you know, over the middle of the football field, and a tight end is running a shallow cross, and I'm like, hey, just run with him. And instead, he runs underneath the route. And if the ball doesn't get batted at the line of scrimmage, not only is it a catch, he's not in a position to make the tackle. That tight end is going to outrun him, get up the field, and pick up an additional, you know, seven, eight, nine, ten, depending on where the next defender is, yards on the play. Instead of him either breaking it up, if he just runs into his hip pocket, you know, and stays in phase. He, you either get a, a breakup or it's immediate tackle upon catch. So, you know, there's some things he's got to work on. But like I said, um, pursuit angles need some work. I, I think two years of experience, he'll get better at that. And he can get kicked out and sealed in the run game. You know, there are times where he's a little hesitant, doesn't necessarily attack it fast enough. Then you get a guard coming off of a double team getting to the second level, and there's Chaz Surratt trying to get to the ball, and that guard says, oh, no, you don't. And he just seals him, and he's done. Can't get off of the block, and now there's a massive hole there where Chaz Surratt should be, or there's a cutback lane where he should have been pursuing and flowing to, and he can't get there because that guard's gotten to the second level and, and, and gotten him a piece of Chaz Surratt. Uh, there's times where he can get kicked out of a gap. Again, he's 227. And so, you know, you get the right guy with the right leverage and the right momentum, and Chaz Surratt can end up on his ass. 
and I've seen that happen as well. So, um, again, it happens, you know, to the best of them. Uh, but uh, there's a lot to like here, man. Um, my projection for him, I can see somebody falling in love with all of the things that I mentioned. I fell in love with all of these uh, skills and, and traits um, and, and pick them day one. I could see that happening. I don't see that happening, however. I think he's an early day two pick. I think he's a second rounder. Um, a top half of the second round type of guy. Uh, but it wouldn't shock me if he just went late, latter half of the second round. He's going in the second round. I don't think he makes it to uh, the third round. But it's all day two. You, you know, he's not getting out of day two. I can assure you of that. I think he's a second round pick. And my comp for him is Darius Leonard. Um, I, and I, I know Darius Leonard is a middle linebacker. And I don't think that's necessarily what Chas Surratt is. I think he's more of a will at the next level. Uh, but I just see a lot of striking similarities uh, to Darius Leonard in terms of, the, you know, the size that Leonard came into the league at, um, how Darius Leonard uh, attacks a lot of scrimmage, how physical he is, how Darius Leonard just doesn't miss tackles. Chas Surratt's first year at linebacker, he had over 115 tackles his first year. You know, I mean, it's his first year. He's already over a buck in tackles. Like, it's crazy. And that, that uh, again, Darius Leonard, tackling machine. Uh, doesn't miss very often. Darius Leonard, an adept blitzer and tremendous in coverage. So I just see Ch Chad Surratt having a, a lot of those uh, similar traits to uh, a Darius Leonard. So um, that's my uh, Chad Surratt uh, breakdown. He's my number four linebacker in this draft. Mm -hmm.